The name's Mirage. Come on. Kill them. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and Maximals, and Terracons to another Transformers Breakdown video. As you all know, Super Bowl Sunday was just a handful of days ago, and the eagerly awaited Rise of the Beast TV spot dropped mixing some clips we have already seen before with a bunch of new footage. For this breakdown, I will be focusing on the new clips and analyzing them in detail. To avoid redundancy, I won't be covering the material we've already seen. But if you would like to catch up on that footage, you can check out my previous breakdown video here, which is now over 1 million views, which is just incredible. So I really want to thank everybody who took the time out of their day to watch that video and to comment that they made it to the end, since that video took a long time to make, and I'm really glad you all enjoyed it. Anyhow, that's enough rambling on my part, so let's dive headfirst into this TV spot and break it down frame by frame. The trailer opens up with Mirage driving in the mountains, intercutting with some title cards that ask the question, what drives the hero in you? Now, I will circle back on what this could potentially mean after breaking down the rest of the footage, since we need a full understanding of what the trailer is telling us in order to figure out the deeper meaning to this question. With that said, if we head back to the Mirage footage, we can see that he is driving around somewhere in Peru. We know this since the landscape we see here matches up with the Peru footage we saw from the previous trailer. Now, due to the way this TV spot is edited, it wants us to believe that Mirage is driving up and drifting into this curve. However, this isn't the case. In this shot, we can see that the guardrail is on Mirage's left. However, in the next two shots, we can see that the guardrail is on his right. Furthermore, this curve is different, since we see a sign right here which is not present in the first shot. Another discrepancy would be the road. In the first shot, we can see that the road has one yellow line, while in the drifting shot it has a double yellow. This calls into question if these two shots take place on the same strip of road that we see in the opening shot. It also calls into question if these two shots are linear in the film or take place at two separate points in time. The latter seems more likely since in the first shot we see Mirage, he's not going as fast and appears to be going under the speed limit of 55 miles per hour, while in the drifting shot he appears to be going a lot faster, almost like he's racing to desperately get somewhere. And as we know in the first teaser trailer, we saw him driving really fast when trying to escape a Nightbird, who is the Nissan GTR, and the road that we saw in that shot has a double yellow. So maybe these two shots are connected in some way. However, since we don't see Nightbird driving around in these shots where Mirage is drifting, we don't have any hard evidence to determine where this shot takes place in correlation with the other footage we have seen so far. Now, moving on to the next scene, it's just the opening sequence from the teaser trailer. However, there's a few key differences. First off, this clip is slightly extended and we can hear Mirage cheer after he completes his transformation. Some other changes that were made was the color grading for the scene. The sky in the TV spot is now much more clear while in the teaser it was moody. Another change that the editors made was making this scene ever so slightly more zoomed in. Some other changes that were done pertain to the CGI. Mirage now has blue paint on his upper thighs and on the side of his shoulders while before they were painted silver. His knees and the middle of the fan on his stomach are now beige while before they were just silver. The lights on his chest are now no longer as red as they used to be. His abdomen now has a few new parts to fill it out. And his head now has more blue on it and is slightly positioned more up. Now, the last CGI changes that would be made actually pertain to the bridge behind Noah and Mirage. The bridge had its support beam layout modified and this part here had its positioning slightly pushed back. It is also now a little bit more out of focus. As for why these changes were made to the bridge, I'm not too sure. Now, the last thing that is new in this shot is Mirage's transformation sound. Unfortunately, I can't play the whole clip due to copyright, but I can play this small segment where you can hear the difference. From here we now move on to the next segment of the TV spot, and here we can see Mirage introducing himself to Noah saying, The name's Mirage. Come on. Kill tap. And I actually have to give it to Pete Davidson. When he was first announced to be the voice of Mirage, I was a little skeptical. But now hearing his voice in character, I think it works. Especially since this interpretation of Mirage appears to be much younger, arrogant, and inexperienced. 
similar to Smokescreen from Transformers Prime. Now, something to take note of in this shot is that Noah and Mirage are in a warehouse, and we have actually seen this warehouse before, since in the first trailer we saw Bumblebee transform inside of it and Optimus Prime heading towards it. Now, for those who are skeptical if this is indeed the same place, we can tell that it is due to the window pane layout, the green support beams, and the various graffiti lining the walls. In my first video, I speculated that this place could be the Autobots' safe house, and that speculation seems to hold up since Mirage is here with Noah, which now leads to my explanation of why they are here. And well, as we know, in the teaser trailer, Mirage kidnapped Noah and was taking him somewhere. At that time, we did not know where, but this TV spot reveals that Mirage took him to the Autobots' safe house. This is further backed up since Noah is seen wearing the same clothes as when he was first taken by Mirage. In addition to this, Mirage is introducing himself to Noah for the first time meaning that this is the first time Noah has seen a Transformer. This is further evidence since we can see that Noah is visibly distraught and he's trying to protect himself with a metal pipe, which upon closer examination has a dent in it, meaning that he likely hit Mirage with it. Now, as for why Mirage has taken Noah here is still a mystery since we still do not know why Noah is the main human character in this movie just yet. So hopefully we will get a better idea of that when the next trailer comes around. With that said, let's move on to the next shot of the trailer, and here we can see this cargo plane flying into Peru with Bumblebee on board about to jump out. This cargo plane is the heroic Autobot Stratosphere, and he will be voiced by John DiMaggio, who has been the voice of so many Transformers characters in the past such as Leadfoot from Transformers Dark of the Moon, Nitro Zeus from Transformers The Last Night, and Crosshairs from Transformers Age of Extinction and The Last Night. Now historically, Stratosphere has been a cargo plane, usually a Boeing C-17A Globemaster III. However, for this film, he will be a Fairchild C-119 flying boxcar. Due to the size of his vehicle mode, his robot form is going to be massive. As a reference, here's a fan-made scale chart that estimates his height to be around 60 feet tall. As you guys can tell, this guy is going to be an absolute unit when fighting off against the Terracons. Now, in this film, Stratosphere is going to serve as the Autobots' transport thus giving us an explanation as to how the bots will get from New York to Peru. And the shot that we see here might actually be the scene where the Autobots come to Peru for the first time. I come to this conclusion since we can see this river in the background, which looks an awful like the river we saw in the teaser trailer when Optimus Prime met Optimus Primal for the first time. However, we are going to need some more footage in order to confirm if this is the case. Moving on to the next part of the shot, we get to see this really cool clip of Bumblebee getting ready to jump out of Stratosphere. And this scene is actually an easter egg to the Transformers Dark of the Moon video game, since in the very first level of that game you play as Bumblebee and have to drive out of Stratosphere's cargo hold. And as a big fan of anything Dark of the Moon, this easter egg is much appreciated. Now something in this shot that is really important to take note of is Bumblebee himself. Since, as we know in the teaser trailer, he appears to get killed by the Terracon leader Scourge in New York. However, he later shows up in Peru with an upgraded vehicle mode. With that said, this begs the question of when this scene takes place. And well, based on B's robot mode, he hasn't gotten his off-road Camaro mode just yet. This is evident since the off-road Camaro had black rims and black side mirrors, parts that Bumblebee clearly doesn't have here, since he only has a single silver mirror with silver rims, meaning that he still has his regular 1976 Camaro alternate mode. Now, even with this information in hand, pinpointing when this scene exactly takes place is still tricky. However, we know it must take place before the events leading up to the final battle, since that's when Bumblebee acquires his upgraded vehicle mode. Now, the last thing in this scene to break down is where Bumblebee is about to jump to. And unfortunately, this is a question that will only be answered with more footage, since we can barely see the landscape outside of the cargo hold. Moving on to the next shot of the trailer, it's just some more footage we've already seen before. However, it is slightly extended at the beginning by a few frames. Among other things, the CGI work for the segment has been updated. Nightbird is no longer as bright, the dust cloud on Optimus is not as thick as it used to be, the placement of the dust as the rock hits the ground has been updated, Optimus's cannon fire has been slightly sped up, and the dust on Scourge in addition to the color of his body are now darker. As for some changes in the sound department, the only sound we got to hear in the teaser was the noise of the rock falling. However, for the bowl trailer, that noise has been reduced, Mirage now has engine sounds in addition to a tire swerve noise, and Optimus's cannon now makes a sound. For some reason, it is the same noise Bumblebee's cannon makes. Unfortunately, I can't show off of these sound bites due to the copyrighted music, so you're going to have to take my word for it. 
Now, moving on to the next shot of the trailer, we can see a clip of Optimus charging up his weapon. And this is nothing new since we saw this in the teaser. However, this clip is slightly extended and has made some improvements to the CGI, most notably Prime's face. As we can see, it now has a lot more detail that wasn't present before. It now fills out the helmet and just overall looks a lot better. Based on how his face looks, he appears to be an older and wiser interpretation of Optimus Prime. And funny enough, his face kinda has a slight resemblance to his voice actor, Peter Cullen. This is likely unintentional since Prime's face design here takes direct inspiration from his Bayverse original trilogy counterpart, but feel free to let me know if you guys see the resemblance. Now, as for some other changes that were made, Optimus's placement in the shot is ever so slightly different. The Autobot logo on his chest is slightly darker. All the silver on his body is a tad bit brighter. His windows now have a glare in them. He has this extra piece of armor on his left shoulder. All the blue and red on him is a little bit brighter. And the sky is a little bit more blue. As for changes that were made in the sound department, the transformation sound for his gun is now completely different. Beast anything. Beast anything. And lastly, as for what Optimus is saying in this scene, we still do not know because there's no audio for it. Hopefully, in the next trailer, they will finally reveal what good old Prime is saying. Now moving on to the next clip, we can see Optimus Primal banging his chest. This is a clip that comes straight from the teaser, and interestingly enough, no changes were made to it at all besides the clip being ever so slightly zoomed in. So we can brush past this one and dive into the next clip, which also comes straight from the teaser. The only change made to this clip is that the cop is now a tad bit brighter. The next clip follows the same song and dance with the color grading being ever so slightly different in some places. This also goes for the next shot as well. However, in this shot, though it comes straight from the teaser trailer, we get to see something we didn't really get to see before. That being Noah disappearing when Mirage creates the holograms, which is an awesome little detail. Now besides that, this clip would receive a few changes. It's now overall faster and has been color graded differently. Another change has to do with the city. For some reason, some buildings have been added while others were taken away. Another change that was made is that the street is now a lot darker. Now moving on to the next clip, we actually get some new footage, which would be of Noah saying nah 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 as a reaction to the holograms that Mirage made. The shot after this would be taken straight from the teaser and would receive some minimal color grading to it. It was also slightly extended at the end and now we can see these two holograms at the back turning into each other. However, the next shot is completely brand new, with Mirage saying, nah, Relax, I'm Mirage, remember? Now, what Mirage is saying is clearly a response to Noah's panic. Yet, this can't be the case since he says this during a different scene. However, something I noticed is that when Mirage says this, his mouth doesn't perfectly sync up. If you focus on his mouth movements when he says I'm Mirage, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. Here, take a listen. I'm Mirage, remember? I'm Mirage, remember? Mirage, Mirage, Mirage. Seems like he's saying something else, right? Maybe this line is actually spoken by Mirage in vehicle mode after Noah starts to panic, but only time will tell on this one. Now for some other details to break down in this shot. Something you might have not noticed is that Mirage has an Autobot logo on his helmet. Another key detail would be the background behind Mirage. This is the exact same location as the scene where Mirage transforms, and we know this since we can see the same power line design in both shots. In addition to this, we can also see the rusty structure with the support beams. As for why Mirage and Noah went to this place is still unfortunately unknown to us at this time. Now moving on to the final shot of the trailer, it's unfortunately just some reused footage from the teaser. However, the only differences are that it has been cut up to be slightly faster, it got some slightly different color grading done to it, Mirage's placement when he jumps off the ramp has been changed, and the lens flare from Mirage's headlights is now more pronounced. After this shot, it transitions to the Transformers Rise of the Beast logo, with the Autobot symbol turning into the Porsche emblem. And this makes sense since the TV spot was all about Mirage, and he transforms into the classic Porsche 911 Carrera RS 3.8. Now, the last thing I want to cover before ending off this video is what the deeper meaning behind the title card, what drives the hero in you, could potentially be. And well, given that this trailer revolves around Mirage, it's possible that it's trying to tell us that he's the hero of the story. After all, he appears to be the movie's main character and serves as Noah's guardian. In the past Transformers movies, Bumblebee was a token character that would interact with the humans. In the first three Bay films, it was with Sam Witwicky, and in the other two, it was with Cade Yeager. And not to mention, in his own solo movie, it was with Charlie Watson. Now Mirage is taking over that role, partnering with Noah. Throughout the trailer, we see Mirage exhibiting cocky and arrogant traits, which suggests that he may need to grow out of these qualities throughout the course of the film in order to become the hero he was always destined to be. 
or maybe this title card was just generic and I'm looking way too into it. And with that said, that was the complete breakdown of the Transformers Rise of the Beast Super Bowl trailer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and had a fun time watching. I make Transformers content like this all the time, so if in-depth analysis on Transformers is your jam, then feel free to check out my channel. A video I would highly recommend would be the story of Nest, the secret military unit that fought Decepticons. Now before I go, I want to say thank you to all my wonderful Patreons and channel members for supporting my channel. You guys are the reason why Theorymus has continued to get bigger and better, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating or hitting that subscribe button below. And with that said, keep on theorizing.